What's up, y'all? This your man, Rajay111. Just at the camper. Um, bringing some stuff back. A couple things. Getting ready for uh, Blue Ridge, stuff like that. Um, I'm here. I'm going to answer this question here. Um, because I, I just, actually, I just thought about it. But I've gotten this question a lot. And um, people ask me about um, should they go camper, like a small camper, or a pit trailer? Um... Wait, hold on. I'm, let me read this email for y'all real quick. Give me one second. All right, shout out to my man Dave. Sent me this email. Uh, how are you? Hold on. All right, he's asking. I'm a happy one with a seven by twelve single axle so far. And which would I pick? Um, small camper or a pit trailer? He going back and forth between the two. And am I happy with the size of my 7x12 single axle, whatever thing? Or um, would I, what would I do over if I did it over or whatever? All right, cool. All right, Dave, that's a very good question. I appreciate you, brother. Um, I've gotten this question a lot. Okay, so let me explain something to y'all. I have both of them. I had my um, camper first. I bought the camper first. Well, I had another camper before this one. But I got the camper first. Camper is great and everything. The reason why I bought the pit trailer, <clears throat> excuse me, is because like I'm bougie. I like to be comfortable, right? So I I don't like grass. All right, I'm I'm from the city, you know what I mean? I'm from concrete jungle, so I like like I like my feet to be planted on solid ground. That's why we know I'm gonna always put a mat out, right? Um, so I bought the pit trailer to be comfortable when I'm there. All right. Now, if you buy a camper, you're pitting outside. You can't control the elements, dust, um, your, you know, your climate, whatever. You're outside, but you will sleep good. You can take a shower, take a nice dump. Um, you know what I mean? You got your old lady with you, you can get some nookie. You know what I mean? All right. So, I'm going to tell you, with a camper, it's a lot, it's a lot more work, okay? I, these things I want people to think about when they they doing this because I didn't know this either you know what I mean so all right so when you buy the camper first one I have to plan my route out all right because I can't go through tunnels all right and with propane I mean you can it's on you but you don't supposed to all right so I gotta plan my route around tunnels all right so you gotta plan that out also um with this camper, it's 11, the height is 11.1. I have to be mindful of that now. My other camper wasn't a big deal, it wasn't that tall. This one's a little taller, so I gotta be mindful of that, all right? So now I gotta pay attention when that thing say like, you know, 10.4, you know, you gotta pay attention or boop, off goes your AC. All right, so all that I have to be mindful of. Um, also, you have to remember, you have to stop and get water whatever race you're going to what i normally do is i get close to the race i mean the area of the race and then i get water there like let's say i was going down to uh okay like i'm going to get ready to go to blue ridge it's um travel thing like a they got an rv dump station they got water so i'll leave empty go there get water and then boom go right to blue ridge so that way you don't carry so much water because that's a lot of weight um you burn a lot more gas all right so you gotta be conscious of that uh too all right um also when you leave in the race you gotta plan out one you gotta dump your tanks meaning you know your shitter and um, dump all the water out for me when it's colder months like florida for the florida race down um sun dancers before i leave florida I have to winterize this thing before I go up north. I can't have no water in the um, in the lines. So, so I gotta winterize, blow all the water out the lines, put antifreeze in the tank and the sinks and stuff like that. So it's just more work you have to do. That's why I only really take this, um, you know, if the old lady going or whatever. But if, like if she ain't going, I'm taking the pit trailer. Um, a camper is nice. Even if you get a small one, it is nice. But if, if I prefer anything, I would do the pit trailer. Especially like he said in this thing is, um, 
Um, da, da, da. He's probably gonna be pitting by himself. You know what I mean? Cool. So like uh, a small trailer would be good for you. You know what I mean? Um, only th okay. Now, as far as my seven by twelve, I have a seven by twelve single axle. As far as my uh, trailer is concerned, what would I do over with it? Only thing I might do over with it is um, I might have would have went double axle. Um, only reason why, like my my trailer is great, no issues, it's that. But with the double axle, you can carry more weight. All right. Um, I have to be mindful of my weight. All right. So like the way I get around that is I use uh, plastic um, cabinets and stuff like that. All right. So you just have to be mindful of the weight. Um, otherwise, I have no issues with my trailer, pit trailer, none. Um, just have to be mindful of the weight. That's that's all. If it's just you, you good. If you think you're going to pit with your buddy, whatever, you want to start doing bunks and all that because you said you want to sleep in it, you might want to go a little bigger than a 7x12 because now you're talking bunks, you're talking more weight. Now, with my trailer, I sleep in mine when I do take it. Um, I just use an air mattress. So I, if you do decide on going with a 7x12, which is probably nowadays it'd be cheaper because trailers are expensive now. Um, when you're building it, Consider the area that you're going to blow up the air mattress with. All right. So you can't have all these cabinets and stuff. And then next thing you know, it's time to blow the air mattress up. And you ain't got no way to blow it up. All right. Me, I like the air mattress because I could fold it up and put it in the cabinet and I'm done. Then rather than having a bunk, a bunk always stays out. But again, if you if it's just you, air mattress. If it's, if you think you're going to bring more people, like, you know, you got a kid, you got a son or a daughter that race with you. Or you bring the wife, you might want to think about bunks. Bunks mean bigger trailer, double axle. So if I was to do mine over, I probably would have went with a double axle. But at the time, um, I got a good price, mine's good. There's no there's no problems with that. Um, also, when you go double axle, now you're talking double toll money. Now, here's the thing too, with a camper and a trailer, whatever you're towing with, uh, with a trailer, it's going to be a little easier. You can get like a little SUV. Ain't that really that serious, depending on how big the trailer is, okay? Um, with a camper, you have to be mindful of weight. And what I mean by weight, you can't get some big old trailer, I mean big old camper, and your tow vehicle ain't like that, all right? I towed my pit trailer and my camper with my um, Titan, uh, 2008 Titan. Now, here's the thing with... Um, I'm going to tell you, you have to be mindful of this thing called a uh, payload, right? All right. Now, let me explain payload to you. Payload is basically whatever you, your occupancy and cargo you bring in and putting in the back of the truck. That's your payload cargo weight. All right. Now, when you start towing with a trailer or a camper, you got this thing called hitch weight. All right. So once you put, you hitch up to your truck, that reduces your payload. All right, so I'm gonna give you some numbers. Okay, with my Titan, I got a Platinum Reserve. It's like top trim level and all this crap. With all the accessories, it brings my payload down. Now I should have went with the Pro 4X. Um, that has a little bit more payload, but um, it's an inside joke with me and CJ about that. But I was gonna get this Pro 4X right, and the guy was playing. CJ was like, "Get that, get that." I was like, "Dude, he playing." So anyway, they, that's a long story. But it's a joke to me and CJ. But anyway, I went with the Platinum Reserve. Now, all these options, I, think, I don't even use none of this stuff, right? So, okay, whatever. But anyway, so my payload is only like 1300 all right? This camper uh, hitch weight is like 650 right? Yeah, 650 give or take. So once I hook up to my truck, boom, that drops my payload down to 650 cut it in half right there, wham. So let's say me and the old lady going, I'm just gonna round this off. Let's say 400, me or, yeah, should kill me saying that too, but really not 400, but I'm just gonna say 400. So me and her together, let's say 400. Now I'm down to 250. Left worth of weight I could put in the truck. Generator is 100, now I'm down to 100, 150. All right, and I ain't even got my RC stuff in yet. The way I get around is that uh, one, I go empty, no water, nothing like that, and the camper. The camper can tow 
um, cargo is like 1700 so I put all my RC stuff in the camper okay and all that stuff inside the camper whatever I can get in the camper I put in the camper and that reduces my car um, payload now this is all considered you got weight distribution and anti-sway all right because that evens the load out across all the axles all right so when you get in the camper you got to consider all these things all right um, now with a trailer it, it is a weight thing too also um, but it's not as strenuous if you don't go with a huge trailer like you go with a 24 foot car joint yeah you, you're gonna have to start thinking about a lot of stuff there all right but you keep it a 7 by 12 double single axle you good no problem um towing it with a half ton or maybe a um nice suv you straight you know what i mean you should be straight um so that's my thing if it's just gonna be you and you ain't really doing the family thing or whatever the case may be pit trail all day long um you can figure out how you want it be your thing no problem um it's nice to have both i ain't gonna lie it is nice to have both the camper can be a pain sometimes though like now I got, i'm getting this together to go to blue ridge then after blue ridge i gotta winterize this thing um i gotta wash it put the cover on all this you know what i mean you gotta protect the investment so um like i said if it's just you pit trail all day all day um and then later get the camper camper is good like i, I like my camper i would never get rid of my camper um, but I always will have a pit trailer too. All right. So I hope that answers people's questions because I've gotten that a lot. This is your man, Raj A111. I'm um, chilling. I'm going to tell you about some, some new products coming out from um, Brent from Bones Motorsports and Mac. Uh, send it. Um, they got some new stuff coming out. I'm just waiting to get information, get my hands on some of this stuff and do some testing and see what it's hitting for. All right. Don't forget Sun Dancers. In the December New Year's Day race, I think popping. Listen, people, you gotta make it a vacation, especially you northerners, right? Y'all gotta make it a vacation. And like I know it's kind of all right for us up north or Yankees, whatever they call us down south. Damn Yankees, I think that's what it is. All right, for us up here, it's gonna be cold. We're gonna be dying to run nitro. You make it a, a family vacation. You put your time in. You come down, and you stay. You race the day. The race is the 31st. I mean, the uh, practice is 31st. Race is that Saturday the 1st. But we're going to be down there all week. Like, my, me and my family, all my family going, um, and we're doing Christmas down there the whole night. So you can come down a week before, practice, run, enjoy Florida. You even go to Disney. Disney got day passes. Take the family to Disney. Do your thing, come back, do a little racing. You'll love it. Make it a vacation. All right, so that's Sundancers. In the December. Uh, practice is December 31st. The race is actually um, January 1st. All right. All right. So this is your man, Rajay111. Let me get by there, y'all. All right. Peace.